I'll tell you about that right now. Breaking news out of Salem. So firefighters are battling an apartment fire there. We know at least one person was taken to the hospital with critical injuries. Now crews are working the scene actively. We know right now eight apartments are damaged. As Chris just said, this is happening off Lancaster Drive Northeast and Satter Drive. Lancaster currently closed in both directions, but we will keep you updated. Now to an alert for parents and students in Albany. The police department will have officers on most campuses this morning after the threat of a school shooting. It didn't actually mention a specific school, but officers are looking into this. They say the threat does not seem credible. Police say they've gotten multiple calls from concerned parents and they plan to have extra officers on most campuses today. Also happening this morning, rescue crews are meeting to decide whether they'll continue to look for a Portland man who disappeared on the Washougal River. The search for 30 year old Stephen Barnaby started yesterday afternoon. Well, Vancouver Fire says that Barnaby was tubing with a friend on Saturday. The two got knocked off of their inner tubes and the woman he was with got pinned to a rock. She was screaming for help, but was unconscious by the time rescuers got to her hours later. When she did wake up Sunday morning, she told police she was not alone out there on the water. So crews went back out to look for Barnaby. Firefighters say rescues like this are more common when temperatures start to heat up like they did this weekend. The water temperature this time of year, again, it's just it's just really cold. Even though the weather's like the end of this week, it's supposed to be close to 90, but the water temperature will not be coming up. Firefighters say water levels are higher than people realize right now, and the water is moving really fast because of the snow melt. They also remind everybody to wear life jackets because in this case, neither of those two people had one on. The man who prompted a standoff with a SWAT team in Aloha is still on the loose this morning. This is a photo of 21-year-old Miguel Estrada. Washington County Sheriff's deputies say he shot out the tires of an empty SUV at an apartment complex near Southwest 185th yesterday. So deputies say that Estrada was armed and then he ran into an apartment and refused to come out. That led to the standoff with the SWAT team. It lasted for several hours. What you're looking at here is some video of the scene. When deputies finally got into the apartment, they say Estrada was gone. Deputies suspect that he's armed and dangerous, so if you know where he is, call 911. Police in Eugene have identified the man shot and killed next to the University of Oregon's campus. Officers say 21-year-old Alex Graydon was a student at Lane Community College. The shooting happened early Saturday morning in a parking lot owned by the university. It was right behind a popular bar and Graydon was found on the ground. In a statement, his family says they appreciate all the support they're getting. Police have not made any arrests, but are now asking rideshare or taxi drivers if they have any dash cam video near the scene or tips related to the crime. In that third quarter, you know, our energy wasn't where it needed to be. Um, like CJ said, it's going to be hard to um, keep a lead or keep a team off you when you score 14 points. Mm. I think it's safe to say the third quarter yesterday at Moda Center was the Blazers' worst quarter of play since the postseason started. They actually led yesterday's game against the Nuggets at halftime, but watch that lead slip away in the third quarter. So the series is now tied at two games apiece after yesterday's loss. The series continues with Game 5 Tuesday night in Denver. Uh, not an easy task, of course, for the Blazers. But can we take a step back for a moment? Because this weekend began Friday night, a quadruple overtime game against the Nuggets. I think after winning that one, Blazers fans are ready to punch the Blazers a ticket to the Western Conference Finals. But then yesterday happened. So Tim Gordon, you're trying to get a hand on uh, the pulse of the Blazers fan base right now. Uh, give us the update on how the fans are feeling. Yeah, Rip City checkup, if you will. From that quadruple overtime win on Friday night to a game four loss at home yesterday, it just doesn't get much more intense than this. Of course, Blazers fans could have done without the drama yesterday. It was a game of runs in the first half, followed by that third period meltdown you mentioned and some officiating a lot of folks didn't like at all. Rip City fans are resilient, but boy, we're feeling the emotions right now. Today's a bummer, but you know, they, they fought, they battled. And Super disappointing. No, we still love them. We have three more games. And we going all the way to the championship, baby. Best believe it.
Great attitude there. Hey, a highlight before the game even started. Yusuf Nurkic received the Maurice Lucas Award. That's given to the player who best exemplifies the spirit of the late trailblazer great big man. And speaking of big men, and one that's really done great for the Blazers recently, did you know, starting today, Ennis Cantor will be fasting to observe Ramadan, a holy time in the Islamic faith. He's done it as a pro basketball player for 10 years now, but never during a playoff series. That means no medicine either for his bad shoulder. You know, he's tough. I bet he'll be all right, guys. 16 hours of fasting during the day, and his cancer is up to it, I'm sure. Next game tomorrow night before the series returns to Portland. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. And fans will be cheering on the Blazers as they head back to Denver for Game 5. And today, we're giving a shout-out to our Playoffs Fan of the Day. Today it is St. Mary's Academy. Everybody's in this picture. We're talking faculty, students, and staff. They're showing off their Portland Trail Blazers pride. If you'd like to be one of KGW's playoff fans of the day, tag MyKGW on your Facebook or Instagram posts, or just email us. That's MyKGW at KGW.com. We have an update this morning to Boeing in the wake of the two deadly 737 MAX crashes. Well, the company now says it did discover a problem with the safety feature on those planes, but didn't alert airlines or federal regulators until after one of those planes crashed. The feature was designed to warn pilots when a key sensor may be giving them bad information about the angle of the plane's nose. Well, that sensor malfunctioned during the crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia, causing the software to push the planes into a nosedive. 346 people died in those two crashes. Boeing says the sensor only worked correctly when airlines bought a separate optional feature. Time now for your morning rush. A Russian passenger jet landed in a fireball in Moscow yesterday. The video is incredible. Investigators say 41 of the 78 people on board died. The jet had returned to the airport for an emergency landing after the crew reported a malfunction. Now it caught fire when it made a hard landing. An investigation into what exactly happened on board is ongoing, but the pilot is reporting they were hit by lightning. This morning, Israel is signaling a ceasefire with Gaza after a deadly surge of violence over the weekend. Gaza militants fired hundreds of rockets into southern Israel yesterday. Israel says four people were killed. They responded with airstrikes, and officials in Gaza say the death toll is now 23. It's the bloodiest fighting since the 2014 war. The NTSB has recovered the data recorder from a plane that skidded off the runway and landed in the Jacksonville River in Florida on Friday. Now, this is cell phone video taken by a passenger. Can you imagine moments after he and 141 others were rescued. No one was seriously hurt. The plane was coming in for a landing during a storm and wasn't able to stop. The NTSB is investigating. President Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen reports to federal prison today. He was sentenced to three years for tax evasion, lying to Congress, and campaign finance crimes. And less than a month after he won another master's green jacket, Tiger Woods will be at the White House to receive a different honor. President Trump will award Woods with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It's the nation's highest civilian honor. Now, President Trump, of course, an avid golfer. He's been photographed with Tiger Woods at golf courses owned by the president. 